Right now, the new heroes of Africa are the youths in Kenya, also called Kenyan Gen Z. From late last month till now, these guys have been working hard to push their demands on the government, and the government has now taken notice. If you have been following the news, you would know that this revolution and drive started when the Kenyan parliament released the proposed finance bill for the new fiscal year, which starts from July this year to June next year. To the surprise of Kenyans who are already dealing with the hike in prices of basic commodities, the members of the Kenyan parliament added $2.7 billion taxes to be raised in the finance bill. Taxes were imposed on essential items including bread, vegetable oil, diapers, sanitary pads, and other items, and based on the reports, the Kenyan government decided to impose these taxes on recommendation from the IMF and World Bank, which has been urging the Kenya government to cut deficits to obtain more funds. However, for the first time, the Gen Z of Kenya took everyone by surprise as they began to organize protests which started from TikTok and other social media and spread until it became a full movement across several communities and counties in the country. The movement for Hash Occupy Parliament and Hash Reject Finance Bill 2024 grew so much so that it garnered attention from the international scene both within and outside Africa. At first, the protests seemed not to have gotten any visible result because on June 25th, the members of Kenya parliament went ahead to pass an amended version of the finance bill, which still included taxes on several commodities. However, while they were still in the parliament building, the Gen Z protesters somehow managed to break through the right security of the building and enter the parliament building. Hashtag Occupy Parliament became a reality as hundreds of protesters entered the parliament building, destroyed some properties, chased out the MPs, and set some parts of the building on fire. The government retaliated, of course, by sending the Kenyan police force to deal with the situation. According to the reports, the police fired rubber bullets and tear gas, which resulted in the death of 39 people and many more injured. The violent response by the government further attracted the international community and was condemned. This together with the relentless efforts of Kenyan Gen Z to express their demand, made President Ruto finally withdraw the bill. In a televised address on June 26, President Ruto said, I concede and therefore I will not sign the 2024 finance bill and it shall subsequently be withdrawn. The people have spoken, he added. This was a great victory for not just Kenya Gen Z, but for families all over Kenya who would have suffered greatly under the tax hike. One would think that the protest would end with this victory. However, Kenya Gen Z has decided to shake things up a bit game by giving the protests a new life. Right now, it's no longer about canceling the finance bill, but a call for accountability in government with both elected and appointed public servants being put on notice over their conduct. Kenyan Gen Z is currently demanding that President Ruto resign as president, and they also made a list of demands that the government need to address top of the list posted online and designated non-negotiable is the call for the executive to obey all court orders and scrap the illegal and illegitimate chief administrative secretary CAS position, as well as the remove of public funding of the office of the first lady, second lady, and prime cabinet secretary spouse, and instead redirect those funds to employing teachers and doctors. Before we talk further about the demands of the youth, Let's analyze this first demand. The government in Kenya says it needs to raise money, hence the reason for the tax hike, but yet public funds are allocated to the office of the first lady, second lady, and the prime cabinet secretary's spouse. The question is, what exactly is the responsibility of these offices? How are they serving the people? Without mincing words, we can kindly say that these positions are useless and are just ways for those in the position to eat public funds. And just like the youths have demanded, these offices should be scrapped and the funds given to teachers and doctors who are doing real jobs but paid pittance. In addition to scrapping those illegal positions, the list also calls for the scrapping of the housing levy, the publishing of audited records on how the funds have been utilized, and refunds for all contributors. The list calls for the immediate firing of all government officials with criminal records and integrity issues 
while being advised to constitute the IEBC within the next 30 days and employ JSS teachers and intern doctors. Demands were also made regarding the reduction of members of parliament's salaries and allowances, capping them at 200,000 Kenyan shillings. According to the Gen Z protesters, MPs should not earn more than doctors. They are also calling for the restoration of the school feeding program. And to curb wastage, the list advises that all government officials should use government vehicles, trains, and airplanes. Taking a look at the demands of the protesters, we can say that their demands are fair and should be heeded by the government. As President Ruto said, the people have spoken, and since they have spoken, what they said should be carried out as soon as possible. Now, regarding the people's demand for Ruto to resign, all we can say is that the people are well within their right to demand such. After all, Kenya practices democracy, and democracy is a government for the people, by the people, and of the people. So, if the people say they do not want him anymore, then their voices should be heard, and their demands adhered to. The reason why Kenyans are so much pained by Ruto is because of how he presented himself when he came to power. Ruto won the election and the hearts of Kenya by presenting himself as a hustler, who because he climbed his way to the top from the bottom, understood the people's suffering and desires. Kenyans were persuaded with his speeches of hustler mentality and sympathy for those at the grassroots. He once said, we want everyone to feel the wealth of this country, not just a few at the top. Aside from the citizens of Kenyans, Africans were also excited about Ruto because he presented himself as a champion of the African cause. He was the first person to say that African leaders are treated like school children by the West and demand that the West give African leaders the respect they deserve. He spoke a lot about one Africa and African unity. However, time slowly brought out the true picture of President Ruto. Whether he had always been like this from the beginning or he changed due to pressure from the West is not really clear. But the fact is, Ruto turned out to be a puppet of the West, particularly the United States. He has proven himself to be a strong ally of the United States so much so that Kenya was granted a non-NATO ally status. And why not? After all, he was the first to raise his hands like a child eager for his parents' approval when the United States needed a country to send to Haiti to destabilize the country. Again, just to prove his loyalty, he damaged the name of his country in support of the Palestinian genocide, incurring curses from those who lost their lives in the Mau Mau struggles. While he is busy going about proving himself a loyal puppet to the United States, the people he swore to lead have been suffering under high inflation costs. The interesting thing is that this recent tax hike was not the first time Ruto and his cohorts introduced it to the citizens of Kenya. It happened last year featuring a tax on salaries for housing. The people were angry, but it was nothing as massive as what is going on right now. Interestingly, the courts even blocked some of his tax proposals. But do you know what his response was? He threatened to disregard court orders and move forward to sign the law. This drew criticism from the Law Society of Kenya, whose leader accused Ruto of seeing himself as above the law. And why won't he think that when he feels he has the backing of the international community? Anyway, Kenya Gen Z has shown Ruto that he cannot be above the law. Right now, the protests are still going on and hot. The recent news is that the protests have escalated into the destruction of the private properties and businesses of MPs who supported the finance bill. In the coming days and weeks, it will be interesting to see how the events will unfold. The question is, will Kenyan Gen Z prevail once again and will their demands be met? What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.